Minh Thủy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 29 tháng 3, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, cuộc chiến Việt Nam đã chấm dứt gần nửa thế kỷ. Trong nửa thế kỷ đó thì người Việt chúng ta ác hẳn ai cũng đã có lần nhìn lại cuộc chiến. Trong những cái nhìn ám ảnh đó, chắc hẳn sẽ có những hình ảnh khó quên về những người thân nhân còn kẹt lại, những bạn bè chẳng bao giờ còn được gặp. Nhưng có lẽ chỉ rất ít người Việt nghĩ tới những người Mỹ tiến vào Việt Nam trong giai đoạn máu lửa từ năm 1960 đến năm 1975. Tại sao những nhân viên Mỹ lại chọn công tác ở Việt Nam? Quá khứ của họ như thế nào? Họ đã suy nghĩ những gì trước, trong và sau khi công tác ở Việt Nam? Trong cuộc phỏng vấn lần này thì Minh Thúy mời quý vị cùng theo dõi hành trình của một nhân viên cao cấp của Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ. Ông Lacey Rice sinh vào đầu thập niên năm 1940. Đời của ông trải qua thời niên thiếu dưới chính quyền Eisenhower, Kennedy cho đến khi trưởng thành dưới thời Johnson, Nixon có thể nói là giai đoạn song song với cuộc chiến Việt Nam. Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi phần 1 câu chuyện của ông Lacey Rice, một nhân vật điển hình của Sở Ngoại vụ Mỹ trong cuộc chiến Việt Nam do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Hi, uh, in this interview I hope that <coughs> through Lacey we can see how the American come to Vietnam from what perspective he had before he come to, to Vietnam and then his reflection on Vietnam throughout the war. Uh, we are talking today with Mr. Lacey Wright. Hi, Lacey, and welcome to our interview. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Yes, I'd like to ask you first, why don't you tell us about yourself uh, from the very early day when you were growing up? Uh, well, I was born in Springfield, Illinois, 1940, which, uh, uh, right uh, in the center of the United States, the Midwest, and uh, uh, from a Catholic family. And I went to Catholic schools all my, uh, <coughs> all my adoles until my adole adolescence. Uh, I went to a Catholic high school. And after that, uh, I uh, went into a Catholic seminary to become a priest. And uh, first uh, I went to uh, uh, Mundelein uh, Seminary in Chicago, and then after uh, I got my uh, uh, undergraduate degree there in philosophy, uh, I was sent to Rome mm. to the to the Gregorian University, and uh, I was there for about uh, two years, and, and then I quit. I changed my mind, and I uh, uh, came back to the United States. Uh, by then, I had become aware that there was such a thing as the Foreign Service, the, the U.S. Diplomatic Service. And that was because I went with a friend of mine one day to the American Embassy in Rome, and I met somebody there who was in the political section of the embassy. Before that, I had never heard of the Foreign Service. Uh, but that seemed to me to combine a lot of the things that I liked. Mm -hmm. uh, languages, uh, travel, international affairs. And so uh, when I left Rome and came back to the United States... What year was that, sir? That was in uh, 1965. 65. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at that point, my idea was to become, uh, try to enter the Foreign Service. Uh, but I couldn't do that right away. It's quite a long process. And also I needed a job when I came back, so I taught for a year at a Catholic high school in Chicago, St. Benedict's, uh, at, the, at the high school level. And I taught uh, Latin, world history, and English mm -hmm. to freshmen in uh, the school. And that was a nice experience mm -hmm. for me. Uh, I was going to school at the same time at Loyola University in International Affairs, 
And then uh, at the end of that year, <coughs> I uh, got it, uh, myself admitted to the University of Chicago. And uh, I was in a program, a uh, master's program for international relations. Mm -hmm. Let me backtrack a little bit before you get to the time of university. You said you were born around uh, what year? 1940. 1940, so 1945 is the end of World War I. That's at that right. time, how, how does it... World War II. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, at, at the time, how does it feel uh, for you growing up? Is the impact of the war still on the United States, or were you too much away from that? I'm sorry, say that again? Said so after the World War II, do you see any impact on the American uh, from you as a student, seeing the country, is there any change or anything like that you see from the Second World War? No, I would not say so. Don't forget, I was a child uh, mm -hmm. when the war ended. I was five years old. Right. And, and, but it's an interesting question because I've thought a, a fair amount about this. I was really, really, as a child and growing up, I would say hardly impacted at all by the Second World War. Mm -hmm. I knew very little about it, uh, and even afterwards, uh, not much about it. Uh, so I would say that my life uh, w was almost totally unaffected by the Second World War. Mm -hmm. When you were in high school, uh, is there any specific goal into the future where you're looking into? Uh, when you study, is there, what's, the, what's the motive? Why would you want to go into the divinity school rather than, uh, say, a technical school, a liberal arts school, or any school? Why, why did you choose in, to go into Catholic school? Well, uh, first of all, I, I chose uh, to uh, go into a Catholic seminary uh, because uh, it seemed at that particular moment that that would be a, a way that I could live a life of service. Uh, and I had people, uh, priests that I respected who were encouraging me, encouraging me to do it. Uh, but as I said, by the t you know, most of the people who go into the Catholic seminary do not finish. They drop out along the way. Mm. Uh, so uh, that in itself is not odd at all. It, it's a, a calling that is really all-consuming. And so if you, and once you do it, particularly back then, uh, that w it was a lifetime choice, so it was a very uh, difficult mm. uh, position to be in. Mm -hmm. And like many of my classmates uh, who dropped out along the way one, at one point or another, mm -hmm. uh, I did so uh, as well, mm -hmm. uh, having uh, thought about it and having decided that this was not for me. Mm. What's the main reason that uh, drive you from that direction? Uh, I think that the, the overall reason is that you, if, uh, a life as a priest is a very restricted one. Uh, there's, there's the obvious the, 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 uh, question of celibacy, of course, but it's really more than that. It, it's really uh, a, a decision that puts you uh, apart from a normal life. And uh, and that's the question that most uh, of us, all my classmates, we all had to wrestle with. And that is why uh, many of them dropped out along the way, and that is why I did. Mm -hmm. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 2 phỏng vấn ông Lê C. Wright, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu, 5 tháng 4, 2024.